So in this final video of glycolysis, we can create sort of a summary of everything that we've seen so that just we're all, we're all on the same page at the final results of this first step, this first overall step of cell respiration. So again, this is still glycolysis, so if you still have room on your page somewhere, try to squeeze this in underneath the same flowchart, otherwise just create a new glycolysis part two flowchart. Um, glycolysis, and this time we're now creating a summary sort of video to explain what we saw, to sort of put everything together. So again, one thing I wanna mention, the glycolysis that we looked at was one glucose molecule. One glucose molecule will give us these summarized results. Of course, we had two phases. We had phase one, which was called what also? It was called the energy investment phase. And we also had phase two, which was called what? The energy payoff phase. In phase one, we had this chemical, let's say, equation occur. We had a glucose molecule, and then we invested how many ATPs? Two ATP molecules in order to create our product of two G3P, but also whenever you take ATP and you invest it, you end up with, um, let's say, a less uh, valuable version of it called ADP. Because we just went from adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate, three phosphate groups to only two phosphate groups, because where's the other phosphate group? Remember, we put, it, we put both of those phosphate groups on glucose to create that unstable, really unstable fructose um, 1,6 biphosphate molecule. Wasn't any good. It split immediately into what? 2G3P. So that was our overall sort of summary for our investment phase. Phase one, we can say investment, actually. We'll write that down. Why was it investment? We put in 2 ATP, and what did we get out of that? We only got 2 G3P molecules, which are very important, but we also got 2 ADP molecules because we utilized the other phosphate groups on 2 G3P. That's why it's called P. So we have 2 phosphate groups, 2 P. That's where the other 2 went. In phase 2, this was our payoff phase. We had a little bit more of a complicated uh, reaction going on here. What we did was we took the two G3P molecules gained from what? Gained one from our investment phase. We combined them with two NAD plus molecules because remember we had to undergo what type of reaction? A dehydrogenation reaction. And then what would we do? We actually combined this with four ADP molecules. Okay, bear with me for a second. I know we didn't mention that in our previous video, but we combined it with four ADP molecules. And this overall gave us this final sort of product of two pyruvate molecules. Pyru, let me a U here, vate. Two pyruvate molecules. We also got two NADH molecules. And we also uh, got four ATP molecules, okay? So, again, this was our payoff phase. So what happens in payoff is that you build ATP. You get ATP out of this phase. The only way to get ATP, just like the only way to break down ATP, is to utilize ADP, but instead of going from ATP to ADP, we went ADP, diphosphate, and we added the phosphates onto ATP. Because remember, in the payoff phase, we took off those phosphate groups. Remember how I crossed out those phosphate groups on that um, three-carbon compound? Um, I believe it was called 1,3-biphosphoglycerate, uh, whatever it was called. It doesn't matter. We took them off, and we tacked them onto an ADP, creating ATP. How many? Four overall. Well, where did the NADH come from? The NADH came from the dehydrogenation reaction. Remember the G3P? I drew it, and I said it has this H available. And you know what came and took that H? The NAD. And that NAD thus was reduced because it gained a hydrogen. And the G3P was oxidized because it lost a hydrogen. And then our final three carbon, very basic, um, let's say, component was pyruvate. It was just those three carbons lined up like this. And we created two of them because, once again, one glucose molecule splits into two separate entities, let's say. But again, we have to multiply everything by two, just like we did here. That's why we see two G3P, two NAD. 2 pyruvate, 2 NADH, those overall are there because of the idea of glucose splitting into two. 
So now finally we can summarize the summary, let's say, by stating that um, one of the most important things we want to keep track of is ATP because that's that energy. This is what respiration is all about. This is the reason we do respiration is to get ATP. So what's our total ATP? Again, our investment phase was a phase that involved two ATP being used. And in addition, we made four. So four, uh, let's say four ATP made. And that is very difficult math. But four minus two will give us a net um, ATP of two. So net ATP, oh, net two ATP, let's say, two ATP. And also, let's not forget, we also created this. Don't, I don't want you to forget that. Uh, we also created 2-NADH. This is an important, important, very important molecule that we'll see um, its sort of overall importance as we move forward in the lecture series. So overall, glycolysis, again, which I want you to remember, this is an anaerobic process, no oxygen whatsoever involved. It's the process of splitting glucose without oxygen in the cytosol involved investment and it involves payoff and we eventually end up with a net of two ATP and two NADH molecules that will then be used in our next step of, of cellular respiration.